What's up, everyone? In this issue of Motive Garage, it's episode five of Project No Secrets, our R33 GTR. We're going to show you the plan of attack for this build so you know what to expect, and we're going to show you how we worked out that plan. Now, if you're a regular viewer of our channel, you know that most of our project cars have actually been more development and testing cars, where we haven't just kind of done one build and it's finished. We keep evolving and we keep testing parts. That makes it a bit confusing to kind of follow that journey with those cars because there's no sort of fixed plan or fixed end goal. Uh, the last time we had a car that we kind of Got, got you guys to follow the build journey, it was probably Jet 200 or a Rubisu. But with our R33, we're going from a bare shell to a finished product. So rather than just tell you what our plan is, I wanted to kind of show you how I develop a plan for a car like this. Because I haven't just done it for my own cars, I've helped a lot of other people develop the plan for their build for their GTR. Now essentially with a GTR, I always said that there's drag, street, circuit. Street is perfectly in the middle between the two. The good thing about a GDR is you can have a street GDR and you can go do a bit of circuit with it, you can go do a bit of drag racing with it. It's actually pretty good at both, but obviously if you want to get really good at one or the other, you need to start focusing the car in one direction or the other. We're just finding now that Jet 14 is just starting to go in that direction. Um, so you kind of got your, your top end of your true street here, and then up here you got pro street. Now, our R33 GDR, it's gonna go this way, towards circuit. Now over at this end, you've probably got open class. You kinda of got club sprint here. And then I think our R33 is gonna end up probably somewhere around there, probably halfway between club sprint and open. So that's where we want it to be. So, once you kind of worked out where you wanna be, what you want your theme of your car to be, now you've gotta kinda of go through and plan out. Now, Everything we talk about here is going to be scalable to budget as well. So first up, engine. Uh, first up, you've got to choose the block. Uh, personally, this is what I think. With the engine block, as you go towards drag racing, you're going to go RB30 or RD28. And then as you go further up, you'll go billet. However, when you go this way for circuit, I think the only way to go is RB26 block. And the reason for that is the RB30 has much worse harmonics in the crankshaft than what a 26 does. So for example, RB30 cranks stock, generally past 7,500 RPM they become a lot more unreliable. They break oil pumps more often uh, and just I've seen the, the, those cranks snap, the snout can snap off, therefore go 26 for circuit. For us to save money, we're purely taking the 2.6 litre bottom end out of the black car, putting it into the gold car, that simple. Rods, pistons, stock crank. Now, that means that our power band is obviously gonna be limited by that. Now, this block and capacity kind of work together. Uh, for drag, you just wanna go as much capacity as you can. For, for circuit, it's more about the power band than the actual sort of outright power due to capacity. And this kind of then bit links back to RPM. Now, obviously, with drag racing, you just wanna have the more RPM, the more power, etc. Circuit's kind of the same. Um, your block capacity and the RPM kind of work together to determine your power band. But the gold car, what we're going to do to save money is we're actually going to use a standard head with valve springs and dropping cams. That's it. Why? We already know we can make 800 wheel horsepower with that. We've already pretty much done that on a, a 2.6 bottom end with a stock head with drop in cams and valve springs. So our power band won't be as high, but it'll be enough. So this is where we get this RPM. So on the gold car, we're going to look for a power band of 4,500 to 8,500 which we can do with drop-in cams and valve springs. Uh, we've still got those cams from the last engine set up from the black car, so we can use that. Now, response and drivability is kind of what's going to be link up the block capacity, the RPM and the turbo. They all kind of link up together, same deal, it's the budget. With drag racing, obviously, <laughs> how much air that turbo can flow is just going to determine everything. So it's pretty much, in this direction, just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger till you get where you want to go. So what do we do with the gold car? So we know we're going to have a 2.6. We're going to have a power band of 4,500 to 8,500. So we're going to go off experience. The GDX 3582 Gen 1 
was the perfect turbo in my eye. Now, the Gen 2, they put a larger compressor wheel on it and it's a little bit laggier. So for me, I think the right turbo for this car is gonna be the G35900. Why is that? Well, the dimensions of this turbo are identical to the GDX 3582R Gen 1. So if the dimensions are the same, and this has better aerodynamics in theory, the response and drivability should be the same, but can make a little bit more power. Now we've got to look at the actual hard part of a GDR, and that is reliability. The first thing to look at is the oiling system. So, most street cars will go a wet setup. So a wet setup is fine for the street. And to be honest, probably fine for drag racing all the way up until True Street. But when you get up to Pro Street, this is kind of where you want dry sump. Now with circuit, I'm gonna be honest with you, with a circuit car, I would dry sump it straight away. Just save yourself the aggravation of trying to keep oil inside the sump and keep it out of the head and trying to stop a catch can from overflowing and have an oil go through the engine bay. It is just easier, quicker, safer, all of the above. As soon as you start getting serious about circuit, try and dry sump it. So going dry sump with a circuit car is pretty important. So I've decided that our R33, I would like to go dry sump. I might get talked out of it, but I want to go dry sump our R33 GDR straight up. Even though it's not making huge power, dry sump will help uh, create vacuum inside the engine, which actually helps make more power a little bit. Um, we'll be able to control oil temperature better and just be more reliable. So we're going dry sump on our R33. So the next thing you've got to look at when it comes to reliability is cooling. Now in your street car, you're gonna have a bigger radiator that's made out of alloy probably, and you'll have an oil cooler. Because you wanna keep your temperatures in check when you're cruising around and things like that. RVs do run pretty warm. I think an oil cooler is 100% necessity on a GTR street car and, and an aftermarket alloy radiator. I think they're just bare essentials on any modified GTR. And as you go drag racing, this doesn't really change. If anything, it becomes less important. If you've got a true street car that still gets driven, that doesn't really change, you still need those. As you get up to pro street though, and you've got an automatic, you might, you'll need an automatic transmission cooler. Um, but then some of the top pro street guys don't use that at all because it actually mucks with the pressures a little bit. Your radiator can actually get smaller and lighter at this end. And if anything, I'm not even sure you need an oil cooler on a top level pro street drag car because it doesn't even get totally at operating temp, does a run and that's it, it's done. It can go cool down in the pits. But when you go circuit racing, Everything gets hot, heavier, and much more important. So the oil cooler that I put on this car is gonna be a hell of a lot bigger than the one I put on the black car or if I was gonna build a, a drag car. But when it comes to cooling with a circuit GDR, it's not just the engine you have to worry about. You actually need to start worrying about gearbox, power steering, diffs, and even transfer case but most likely we'll be talking with Hypertune and PWI to get all the coolers we need for everything. Why? So it can do more than a lap. I don't want to build a GDR that does one flyer and then needs to cool down for 10 minutes. I want a GDR that can go out and do five, 10 laps. That's what I want to be able to do. So for us, cooling is going to be paramount. Now, the next thing to look at is fueling. Uh, in your street car, you probably want to keep your factory fuel tank more than anything, so you have 70 litres. Now, some people go for the whole twin in-tank pump with no surge tank. That's fine in a street car, probably fine in a drag car. But once you go circuit, you have to get a surge tank. I don't care what anyone tells you, nothing you put in that factory tank is gonna stop surge. But do you keep your factory tank? Well, to begin with, yes, because you're still driving on the street. It's not until you get all the way over here in open class that you kind of go, all right, fuel cell. Now our GDR will keep a factory fuel tank and I'm gonna put a surge tank under the back of the car. So we're gonna go for the surge tank, but we don't, like I said, you can go smaller in the tank as you go this way but we don't need to. So we're gonna have surge and factory tank. Now the power that we wanna make, we'll do it with two wall row pumps. So they're pretty reliable. You can have like a surge tank with them sitting in it. It's a pretty easy combo. So I think I'll probably go two times wall row, which means I don't have a huge current drain, don't need a crazy alternator and crazy electric setup and I don't need to go mechanical fuel pump on that car. It's when you get to here that you need a tank in engine bay. And then over here, 
It's just that tank only. Then you've got injectors and things like that. We're on E85, so we're gonna go for a stainless injector. I've reused a Bosch 1650cc injector. In fact, I'm gonna use the old ones out of my 32 GDR in the gold car. What fuel rail will I use? If I use a hypertune inlet, I'll use a hypertune rail. If I use a stock inlet, I'll use a stock rail. Works perfectly fine when modified to twin entry. So for the power we want, the 500 kilowatt, the 550 max, uh, that'll all work just fine. So the next one is electronics. Now, if you have a street car, you'll just go for a plug and play. So as you go this way, you need more functions, and you need more sensors. As you go this way, same deal, you need more functions, more sensors. But which ECU you use and what you get, et cetera, will be budget. The other thing you're gonna need more of, and that's why you need more sensors, is data. Now, like I said, a street car, plug and play. But as you get further in each direction, you're probably gonna to wanna to do a custom wiring harness. Why? Mill spec wiring, you wanna make sure it all works. You don't want any issues in your electrical system. You don't want any trigger issues. You don't want any faults with any sensors at all. So you're essentially, you're just spending more money, more budget. But like in a basic circuit car and probably up to True Street, you can still basically do a plug and play item for an ECU. But here's another spanner in the mix. If you're building a dedicated race car or you're starting from a bare shell like we are, not only do I need to wire in an ECU, I've got to pretty much do an entire new body loom as well. So you're going to need a PDM or a power distribution module. So for me, I think what we're going to do with our car is go for the Howtech Nexus R5. Why? Because it has a PDM, ECU and logger all in one. Which means when we go to wire the car, it's going to be heaps easier to wire up. And because it's a more circuit dedicated and we're starting from scratch and we custom wiring, this is just going to be the best solution. More expensive item to begin with, but way less work to do to get it all working. And then the other thing that you've got to look at as well is upgrading the trigger kit into the car. So yes, I've used a stock crank angle sensor all the way up until probably 750 wheel horsepower, but there were errors. It was reading. We had to tune conservatively with timing up top because it would jump around. You need to put a trigger kit in if you're gonna rev past, probably even realistically seven and a half regularly. Um, eight, eight and a bit is fine occasionally. And if you're gonna make more than 600 wheel horsepower, why does the power affect the factory signal? It will make, you've got to remember that as it, the engine talks and moves and revs, the acceleration rate of the belt, the deflection of the belt all changes, so the signal can change. So a trigger kit is a must on pretty much any serious RB build. Uh, what else are we gonna use? Obviously R35 coil pack kit. Get that from Platinum Racing Products and then we'll get the trigger kit from there as well. So they're a must on electronics on this car. So you've kind of seen the basic overall engine package now. Let's move on to the drivetrain, then the suspension, then the brakes, then the body. Now in a street GTR, some people like to have good comfort. So they're gonna wanna stick with a synchro box um, that is nice to drive on the street, which means your options are Go gear set, probably a synchro, or you go R34 jet drag. I think that that with 411s is literally the ultimate gearbox for a GDR. But as you get more and more serious in this direction, you're going to want some type of dog engagement gearbox. Now whether that's either a gear set or a sequential. Your other option at this point is to, are you ready to say this? Some people say it's a dirty word, is go auto. And that will keep you going all the way up here. I'm sorry, but once you're up here, you're auto. So for a circuit orientated GDR, here's our options. You can go 4-3 diff ratio with the five speed. You'd probably put a gear set in like PPG, et cetera. Go for a sequential transmission, which you'll definitely need as you move further up to being a more hardcore circuit car. We have a PPG sequential in our R32. Uh, we have a Samsonis sequential in our S14. I'd like to put a PPG sequential in our R33. It'll make it ineligible for Cobb Sprint class, but I don't care. Um, that's what I'd like to have in it. If I can't get a sequential, my other option to look at is a jet drag out of an R34, also getting very expensive, um, or a six-speed H pattern dog box would actually allow me to do Club Sprint, but they're hard to find. So Hollinger made one, HKS did one, which I'm pretty sure was a Hollinger. Very rare, very hard to find. So. I'd probably like that if I want to do club sprint or I'll go a sequential if I can. Um, I just can't do a five speed anymore. I've just been spoiled with six speeds in GDRs. So now when it comes to clutch, single plate for a street car, I still wouldn't. Once you modify GDR, you need a twin plate. As you get more extreme, you basically want to get lighter. Now when you drag race, you probably want to go more for strength. You just want it to be strong and last. When you go to circuit, you want it to be light. 
And the, and the more crazy it gets as a circuit car, the smaller those clutches can get with more plates, get mega light, terrible to try and take off with. You would never drive it on the street, but it's super light, making the car more responsive. And when you're using a sequential box, and you've got electronic throttle for you know down blipping and things like that, you, you barely use the clutch anyway. So it'll be a twin plate, it'll be lighter than factory, but not crazy lighter than factory, uh, and it'll be spec to handle 500 kilowatts. It'll pretty much be the exact same clutch we had in our R32 GDR for the first few years. So we already know what we're doing there. When it comes to shafts, over here, all you'll change is go carbon prop shaft, or the tail shaft at the back. The rest of it, stock. Street car, all stock. When you go drag racing, Basically, as you start breaking more things, you go billet. That's it. Our GDR for circuit, all of the shafts will be completely standard. Don't need to touch them. So in a street car, the mechanical diffs that you get in GDRs are perfectly fine. I think the active LSD diffs are fine up to about 500, 600 wheel horsepower. After that, you probably want to think about moving back to a mechanical LSD so it can handle the strength, be more consistent and reliable. So you need a rear is just strength. And the front LSD is essential. Once you go past 700 wheel horsepower, these things buck, weave, want to change lanes, etc. when you have the factory open diff. So a front LSD is essential. We have a Quaif LSD in our R32 and a stock LSD in the back, but obviously re-shimmed to be stronger. Now when you go to circuit, you've got to actually decide. You want one, 1.5 or two way. Personally, I prefer a 1.5 way in the back. For our R33 GDR, I'm going to use a stock rear, but shimmed. And same deal, I'll use a Quaif front LSD. All right, so the next thing we're gonna look at is suspension. This goes for every type of car. The more you go to drag, the more you go to circuit, the more it changes. Now, the good thing about a GDR is your street suspension will probably be still pretty good at circuit, pretty good at drag. Our R32 is a perfect example. It has 10 Super Streets, the entire Super Pro catalog for every bush, only has a couple of rose jointed suspension arms, so it's not too stiff and loud. Um, but it's compliant, um, great on the street, it works great for drag, and it's still pretty good for circuit, to be honest. Your alignment's gonna change a lot between them. So as you go circuit, you, the main thing that's gonna change is you're gonna go way more negative camber. That's gonna change on your alignment. But the problem is, negative camber going this way is bad because heaps of negative camber on the back when it squats, it gets more, gets less grip. So for the rear of the car, you're gonna go positive camber on the rear, a lot of these cars run a degree of positive camber on the back, so when they squat, it comes level and get full contact patch. More positive rear camber. Um, ride height changes as well. You can come down in your ride height for circuit, less air under the car, lower center of gravity. Your street car needs a sensible ride height just so you can get up driveways. And, and then in drag, well, all you care about is the suspension working. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is shock absorbers. So a street one, you're going for comfort, but you want enough compliance that you can still throw it around a corner. But in a drag car, you're gonna go softer. So that's just how it is. You want it to squat, it's gonna be softer. But when you go circuit, you're gonna go stiffer. Stiff, Viagra, soft, no Viagra. Where are we gonna be? About here. So Shockworks will do the coilovers for the car. They did it in a Porsche, they're amazing. Chris will just tune them to suit circuit more than street. It's just the trade-off you have to have. So we are gonna have some pretty serious suspension upgrades in the car. In the back, I will modify the pickup point for the lower arm. Um, I'll probably keep factory lower arms in the back because I don't need to increase the track, but it will have obviously a Hikers removal kit because it's junk um, with rose jointed arms. I'll have rose jointed camber arms and rose jointed toe arms that are all adjustable. In the front, I probably will get rid of the factory style lower control arms, go for an aftermarket lower arm that's adjustable for track. Uh, probably put a roll center adjuster in and put adjustable caster rods and an adjustable upper camber arm in the front. Basically, I want to get my geometry correct and I want things that are rose jointed in areas that really matter the most, that could deflect, especially the front steering. And obviously, I want to have rose jointed tie rod ends in the steering as well. So, essentially, we're going to have all aftermarket arms in our GDR, but they're all things that you can buy and do in your streetcar. We're not going to do any fabrication crazy custom work when you use nothing but off the shelf. So white line bushes and sway bars, Shockworks coilovers, what brand of arms we're going to use, I don't know yet, that'll depend on my budget. So that's where we're going with the suspension and that's what you really need to pick early with your build is where you want to end up. All right, next thing to look at is brakes. Now the good thing about a drag car is they get smaller and get cheaper. <laughs> so you're going to have stock brakes on your eight second car because you're going to have a parachute. So. You will need to obviously have a good pad. Project Mu HC Plus is my favourite, or an E-League race pad. Uh, they work cold, pull you up really good. 
So you can get smaller. Um, but then when you get up to the serious Pro Street end, you also need to worry about going lighter. Now with a streetcar and going to circuit, it's just budget, to be honest. Um, you'd spend your money on brakes before you spend it on your engine if you're gonna go circuit racing. GDRs are relatively heavy. So with our R33 GDR, I wanna go at least 355, but probably something more like 370 mil plus. In fact, an R35 GDR would be awesome. Brakes on the front. I want at least a six piston front and a four piston rear. The factory Brembo two piston on the rear will not be enough. We also want brakes that are big enough to hold enough heat to do multiple laps. I don't wanna do 100 laps, but I wanna be able to do probably at least three to five laps back to back in our car. So we're gonna to have to go for something pretty serious. What are we gonna use exactly? To be honest, I'm not sure yet. I'll speak with various uh, companies that I'd like to work with and just work out the best solution for our budget. So when it comes to the bodywork, when you have a street car, you'll probably just keep it stock. GDRs are good looking things. You might add a front lip or a rear spoiler extension that does nothing but make more drag. And that doesn't really matter on a street car, right? Like, do what you want to your car. But as you go circuit racing or drag racing, you actually start having more consideration. So with drag racing, Weight, drag and stability. Now, a lot of people take the rear wing off and put a drag wing on, or have no rear wing at all. It is true, taking the rear wing off a GDR, you will get more mile an hour. So now with a circuit car, the main thing we want to worry about is aero or downforce and weight. I'm not going to go crazy on lightweight panels on this car, it's simply just too expensive. I'm just going to leave it and it won't be relevant to our viewers. But what I do want to worry about is aero. Now, in stage one, I probably won't do anything other than just be stock, but we are going to start adding some aero to the car, such as a front splitter, um, experiment with some side skirt design, underbody design. We may put an aftermarket rear wing on it at one point, just to at least show you guys what it does, and give some comparisons for people to see what works and what doesn't. So for us, it'll be stock aero to begin with, stock panels to begin with, and then we're going to add some aero as we develop the car a little bit once it's all running. So. Basically with circuit, the, the extreme is Lexan windows, carbon everything, um, huge amount of aero. Just look at the open class cars, extreme, Matt Longhurst, and you'll get what I want that end of the extreme is. So for us, we want to use this car in a way that every GDR owner could go to the track and use it. So pretty basic in the aero and lightweight department. So the last thing to look at is tyres, something often overlooked by GDR owners, I must say. Um, guys will have a thousand horsepower and have crappy tyres on. So the tyres are going to determine if all of the mods you've done actually work. And to be honest, it really is a case of determining if you want an all-rounder, something that's more towards handling, something more towards drag racing. Obviously with drag racing, put a drag radial on it. Um, like a basic street SS is going to be fine to drive around on, take some corners, drive normally, and obviously heaps of grip in a straight line. Um, the more serious you get, usually the smaller the wheels you get so you can have a larger profile which helps absorb more on launch and have better, better takeoff. Kind of the same deal going that way. Um, the more serious you get with circuit, the more serious the tyre gets at one end. Like I love the Hoosiers, um, but really they like you'd take them off to drive on the street. You wouldn't drive on the street on them. An AO50 and like a Hankook and an R888 and all those sort of R comp tyres, they can be driven on the road, they're a little bit noisy, but they're great for circuit. The, and I think a Yokohama 8008 is probably one of the best all-round tyres. I use it on our R32 GDR. Um, they're expensive and I have to pay for them, but they're good and they're worth it. So tyres is a big thing you have to worry about on your GDR as well. So now you saw the thought process that I had to work out our plan. And here's our basic specs. So we're using the 2.6 block and crank and bottom end with the Nido forged internals out of our black car. Uh, has a platinum brace as well, RP head studs, main studs. It will be dry sumped for reliability for circuit. We're going to go back and use the head that I used to have on my black car that's basically a stock head but it has aftermarket valve springs and Tomei dropping cams. It's going to keep it pretty simple. I'm going to use a G35 900 turbocharger. Uh, it'll use a turbo smart gate, blow off valve, fuel pressure regulator. Uh, I'll probably use a Hypertune exhaust manifold. Reason being is because they're going to do the rest of the fab work. So we're going to use all their stuff. Uh, I've used six boost on my GTR and I will say they've always been awesome. So it's not about one being better than the other. It's just the fact that it's going to be at Hypertune. While it's at Hypertune, they'll do a Hypertune intercooler. I'm probably going to go a version 2 inlet. And the, the reason for that is a car like this, with what it's going to be used for, if you already had a running car, I'd probably say to you, mate, just, just use the stock inlet, don't worry about it. But because we're building this car from scratch, from a bare shell, and I want it to be reliable, immaculate, and just cool, and with drive-by-wire, with a Bosch drive-by-wire throttle body, I don't have to worry about there being any water hoses and lines and all that crap under the inlet manifold, so it'll be more reliable and easier to work on. So Hypertune are going to basically do their catalogue on the car and they'll do a four inch exhaust system as well. Um, I'm going to use a factory fuel tank, but I'll get some type of surge tank, not sure who or if it's custom or what. Uh, what pumps will I use? 
got a few options. I'll use 1650cc Bosch injectors because I know they work. Uh, management, I'm going to see if I can get a Howtech Nexus ECU so that we get the PDM, the data logger uh, and the ECU and we'll get a Howtech digital dash as well. Uh, PRP coil, pit, coil pack kit, trigger kit, etc. I'll talk to PWR about the cooling system on the car for all the other oil coolers, trans cooler, etc. Uh, gearbox, not sure yet, but like I said, I'd, I'd much rather a six speed of some type. Um, worst case is I go 4 3 diff ratio with a five speed, but I'll be looking for some type of six speed, whether it's H pattern or sequential, I'm not sure yet. Uh, the diffs, I'll go for a standard rear diff 1.5 way, Quaif 1.5 way in the front. Suspension, coilovers with shock works, entire white line catalogue for the bushes and sway bars, uh, and then I'll get aftermarket adjustable arms. Brakes, big. So what about the outside of the car? Well, it is going to stay top secret gold. I don't care that it was red, I don't care about originality, the car's going to be way too modified for that. Um, I don't have any beef against top secret after what happened at all, to be honest, and it's going to stay this colour because it's a nod to what the car used to be, and it's a nod to my, one of my favourite GDRs of all time. It will keep a top secret body kit, I'm trying to get the old bonnet back, hopefully I will. Um, if not, I'll get a top secret bonnet for it. Most importantly though, is these bad boys. I've got some original style Volk T37s in bronze. You cannot get these anymore. Big thanks to Import Monster for getting them. They weren't cheap, but they will finish off the look of this car perfectly. Uh, what tyres? Well, I'll probably have a few options. Um, the cage. It will be getting an AGI bolt-in cage and it will be getting a trimmed interior at some stage and I will go custom with that. Who's gonna do it? Yeah, don't know yet, probably Concept Garage. Let's see how we go, hey Danny? So we've chosen most of our parts, some can be chosen later. We know the condition of our R33 shell now after the last couple of issues, so we can work out a plan. Firstly, you guessed it, everyone said it, that cage is coming out. We're gonna put a dummy engine and gearbox into the cart so they can then go off to Hypertune to get the fab work done. So that way we can fabricate up all of our intercooler piping, work out everything, seats, see what brackets and stuff are missing, uh, and do sort of like the main fabrication and obviously the exhaust. So once the fab work's done, we'll pull the engine and box and everything back out of the car. We're gonna send it to AGI and they're gonna develop a new bolting cage. They've already done one for 33. They just wanna make some revisions, make it better. Um, it'll be a CAMS national cage that allows us to do any type of motorsport and probably even be a cage that lets us do uh, single digit quarter mile as well. So good thing about a bolting cage is, you just take it out. So if we want to have a half cage in and cruise around, we can. If we want to take it all out, we can. Um, if we, it means it can get registered. It means that if we do sell the car later, the person has that choice. We're not stuck with a welding cage. Once we've done that, we then can work out which holes in the car can be filled up, what repairs need to be made, and basically do all of the sort of metal repair work on the car on the inside. Then I'm going to prep the shell. Probably going to get it sandblasted in the engine bay and in the, in the interior and the boot because it's so messy. Then it'll go to paint. Um, once the shell is painted, we'll essentially start the build, I guess. Um, we can put a real engine in it. We'll pull all the subframes out and go get all the suspension done and clean all them up. And then basically start putting it together to create, essentially, like I said, a, well, a GTR RS, which will be pretty cool.